We need to know what makes people ill in order to improve population health. Most importantly, we need to be able to reliably identify changeable causes of ill health in order to intervene to improve health. In this brief talk, I'm going to outline a new method called Mendelian randomization, which utilizes our ability to sequence human genomes to provide more reliable evidence about changeable causes of ill health. But before I do that, I need to mention what is wrong with conventional approaches. This newspaper headline, Processed Meat is to Blame for One in 30 Deaths, we're used to stories like that all the time. This is based on an observational study and it was shown that indeed people who ate more processed meat didn't have higher death rates. But we all know that people who eat more processed meat differ in lots of other ways from people who don't. They're more likely to smoke more, for example. They might be more likely to be obese. And it could be those factors which lead to the increased mortality risk, not eating the processed meat itself. In epidemiology, we refer to this as confounding. Or this headline, got high blood pressure, have a drink or two. Now I do have high blood pressure and I like a drink or two. Should I follow this advice? The problem is that when people are ill in any way and go to the doctor, the doctor's going to tell you to drink less. So it could be that the disease and the identification of disease leads to people drinking less rather than that drinking alcohol improves things. Or for mothers who are drinking, this headline from the Times of India from when I was working there, that mums like drinking during pregnancy doesn't harm the baby. Or in The Guardian, light drinking in pregnancy may be good for baby boys. Or in the BBC News, light drinking no risk to baby, say researchers. And then finally a story, pregnant women told to ignore drinking advice. But what advice should they ignore? To drink more during pregnancy? To drink less during pregnancy? Again, we all know that it's likely that mothers who drink more frequently during pregnancy are, are, will differ in many other ways from mothers who don't. Indeed, in the studies that are reported here, the mothers who drank more frequently during pregnancy were likely to have higher educational attainment and to have healthier lifestyles more generally. And it could be those factors that lead to the improved outcomes in their children. Here's an advert from the Boston Globe. The average American lifespan has increased nearly three years over the last two decades. We've been selling vitamins at a discount since 1977. Coincidence? We don't think so. And vitaminshop.com, who might have a pecuniary interest in this area, want you to believe that it's because you're taking their vitamin tablets that you're living longer. They can say this because of observational studies such as the one reported here in the New York Times. Vitamin E greatly reduces risk of heart disease, studies suggest. This was reporting on an investigation, an observational study, which showed that people who were taking vitamin E supplements had about a 40% lower risk of having a heart attack. But of course, the people who take vitamin E supplements differ in many ways from the people who are not taking the supplements. And indeed, when randomised controlled trials were done, randomising people to either taking vitamin E supplements or to taking placebo sugar tablets, there was absolutely no benefit in terms of heart disease risk of taking the vitamin E supplements. The association the observational study appears to have been generated purely through confounding. Or well, finally, we've all learnt about good cholesterol, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, which is meant to protect us from coronary heart disease. Substantial amount of data from observational studies suggested this. But when, at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars, a series of randomised controlled trials were done, randomising people to drugs which increase their HDL cholesterol level, there was absolutely no benefit in terms of their heart disease risk. As I mentioned, a randomised controlled trial is the best way of getting robust evidence on how a changeable risk factor might influence disease. In the randomised controlled trial, you use randomization to generate two groups who differ in no other way except the intervention that you give, either vitamin E tablets or placebo, or a drug that raises HDL cholesterol or placebo. This is a great method, but it's very expensive. And in many situations, you simply couldn't do this for logistic or ethical reasons. You couldn't randomise pregnant women to drinking more or drinking less during pregnancy, for example. But help comes from an unexpected quarter. This is from genetics. Here is Gregor Mendel, the monk 
who's the laws of genetics we all learnt at school. Now his laws of genetics mean that genetic variants that are passed on from parents to their children are essentially randomised. And that means that the genetic variants do not associate with all the factors that would confound a conventional observational study. They are not in general related to smoking status or social class or aspects of a healthy lifestyle. And they, 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 such genetic variants allow one within observational data to generate two groups who differ by the genetic variant and through that differ by any factor that the genetic variant itself relates to. So for example there are genetic variants which relate to drinking more or less alcohol and the genetic variants that relate to having higher or lower HDL cholesterol and those genetic variants which are very cheap now to measure in population studies. Those genetic variants can be used to generate groups which differ on their on average level of alcohol intake for example or their on average HDL cholesterol level but don't differ in, other, in relation to a whole host of other factors. So it mimics a randomised controlled trial, but using observational data. Here's Mendelian randomization in a graph similar to the one I used for demonstrating the randomised controlled trial. And we can put the two together to show the equivalence of these two methods. For those interested in the answers to the, some of the earlier questions I highlighted by the, with the newspaper cuttings, mothers who drink more during pregnancy, their offspring actually do worse on IQ tests and in school performance, rather than better, as the observational studies suggested. Drinking alcohol increases one's blood pressure, and certainly if one has high blood pressure, having a drink or two is not the solution. And finally, raising HDL cholesterol with drugs has absolutely no effect on coronary heart disease, despite a huge amount of observational evidence suggesting that it would. We are getting reliable evidence on changeable risk factors for disease through utilising genetic variants which relate to those changeable risk factors for disease. And this method, the Mendelian randomization method, is going to transform how we get reliable evidence about modifiable causes of ill health.